Hello, this is the section 3.2 to 3.3 lesson. Uh, this section is a little bit lengthy, however the concepts in it are fairly simple and, and ones that you may be already familiar with. Uh, for this section you will need your calculator. Now in this section we're going to start actually crunching some numbers and doing some things that we commonly think of as being statistics, quote unquote. First thing we need to mention is that statistical concepts are broken down into two general categories. Descriptive statistics are concepts where we summarize or describe the important characteristics of a set of data. Like, for instance, we may graph data or we may calculate means and medians like we're going to do in this section. Uh, inferential statistics are concepts that we're maybe not as familiar with, and those are concepts we'll focus on later on in the semester. But those are ideas uh, where we make inferences or generalizations about a population. So we take information from a sample to make some sort of generalization about the larger population. Well, to illustrate uh, some of the ideas of a basic uh, descriptive statistic, let's start off with a simple set of data. Here's a sample of salaries at Advantage 2000 consultants in thousands. So we've got one person who makes 22,000, two that make 25,000, one that makes 35,000, and another one that makes 110,000. Now, first thing we ought to do is just look at the numbers real quickly. We note that the first four numbers are all relatively close to each other, uh, but that last one is quite a bit larger than the others. We call that one an outlier because it lies outside of, of the range of the other of the other numbers. Doesn't mean that anything's wrong with it necessarily. Uh, it's just quite a bit larger than the others. Well, first thing we'd like to do with the set of data is to maybe try to summarize it using just one number. Numbers are hard to look at. I want to take this set of five numbers and crunch it down to just one number. So we're going to attempt to do this with what we call a measure of center. And we're going to talk about four different measures of center. Uh, the first one is one that we're probably all familiar with. It's the mean. It's denoted by x bar. And we calculate it by adding up all the values in the sample and then dividing by the number of values in the sample. Uh, this Greek letter sigma in mathematics means summation. Now one quick note about the units of a mean is that they are the same as the original data. So the original data here, the units were in thousands of dollars, so the mean is also going to be in thousands of dollars. Uh, the second one is another one that we may be familiar with called the median. It is the middle value when the data values are arranged from smallest to largest. So you line up your numbers from the smallest to the largest, pick the one that's right in the middle, that's the median, it's denoted by x tilde. Another one that we may be familiar with is called the mode. It's the value that occurs most frequently. Uh, last one is one that we may not be familiar with. It's called the mid-range. It's very easy to calculate. We simply take the maximum value uh, and then add the minimum value and divide by 2. We may think of this as the quote-unquote average of the min and the max, or another way of thinking about it is halfway between the minimum value and the maximum value. So let's look at it, calculating the mean, median, mid-range, and mode for this simple set of data. Uh, so for the first one there, x bar, we simply add up all the values in our, uh, in our, our set of data and divide by the number of values, which is 5. So you see there in the lower left-hand corner, the calculator commands for how we could do this if we wanted to enter it manually. Simply add up all the numbers. You put that sum in parentheses, and then we divide by 5. And you see there the mean is 43.4. Uh, now the median, we really don't need a calculator to do this. We just line up the numbers from smallest to largest, as they already are. Take the one that's right in the middle, which is the third one. That's 25. That's our median. X tilde is 25. Uh, the mid-range, we take the largest, add the smallest, divide by 2. You see that calculator command there in the lower left-hand corner. And that is 66. The mode, again, we do not need our calculator to find that. Just find the one that occurs most frequently. 25 occurs twice. All the other values occur only once, so the mode is 25. Now, one quick observation we want to make here is that that mean of 43.4 is larger than all but one of those data values. In fact, it's quite a bit larger than, than, all, than most of them. Uh, so if we were to report that the mean salary at Advantage 2000 Consultants is $43.4,000, um, 
then uh, it, that would be accurate, but it would give a bit of an inaccurate impression. Uh, it makes the, the salaries look a little bit higher than, than they really are. So we're going to come back to that topic here in a minute. Um, but let's look at how we can uh, calculate these on our calculator using some built-in formulas. Now this is the first time that we've actually crunched numbers on our calculator, so we need to set up our calculator so that things will work properly. And so to do this, for, of course, turn on your calculator first and then select STAT. This is a button that we'll be using frequently throughout the semester. The STAT button is just beside the arrow keys. And then select the first option, Edit. And then below that, scroll down to option 5 for Setup Editor. Press Enter once, and you'll see the Setup and Editor command pasted at your blank home screen. And then press Enter again it'll say done. All that does is set up things so that, the, so that they'll work the way that we intend them to. Now once we've set up the editor we can start entering data. So to enter the data select the stat button again and then select that first option edit and then underneath that scroll to the first option edit uh, press enter and you should get a screen that resembles this one here on the right hand side. Now it will probably be blank because we haven't entered any data um, we want to enter our data there and list L1. And so under L1, just type in the, the numbers uh, 22, 25, 25, 35, and 110. Press Enter after each one. And that's all there is to entering the data in our calculator. Next, we're going to calculate what we call one variable statistics. So select the Stat button again, and then scroll over to that second option, Calc, and then choose the first option, number 1, called one var stats, which stands for one variable statistics. Now press enter once, it will paste that one var stats command at your home screen. Press enter again, and it will actually do the calculations. Now when it's all done, you should get a screen that resembles uh, this one on the left. Uh, it says one var stats at the top. The first one says x bar equals 43.4. That's our mean. Now next is sigma x, which is simply the sum of all the x values. Next is sigma x squared, which is the sum of the squares of the x values. Those two numbers aren't terribly important. Uh, the next two numbers, sx and sigma x, we'll talk about here in a minute. Uh, below that we have n equals 5. n is our sample size, just the number of values uh, in, our, in our sample. Now notice that little arrow pointing down, that means that there's more results. If we scroll down, we'll get some more results. So if you do that, um, scroll all the way down, you'll get the screen that resembles uh, something there on the right. You see n equals 5 at the top, min x equals 22, so the smallest value in our data set is 22. Q1, uh, we'll talk about in the next section. Uh, MED stands for median, that's our median, 25. It automatically calculated that for us. Q3, we'll again talk about in next section, and max x, that's our largest data value, which is 110. So that's all there is to calculating the mean and the median. The uh, calculator do that do it for us automatically. Now let's look at what happens when we remove that outlier from the data set. Uh, when we've got a value that's so much larger, we may be tempted to remove it um, and just, just see what happens. Now there's maybe not necessarily wrong with that number of 110, but let's just look at what happens when we remove it. So we remove it, we only have four numbers left. If we find the mean, the median, and the mode, we can do that just like we did in the previous example. Uh, we could uh, go back to our calculator and, and delete that uh, number 110 from our data list and then do the one var stats again. And uh, there's our, our mean, uh, 26.75. The, um, the median is still 25 and the mode is still 25. So notice that the median and the mode do not change. However, the, uh, the mean is, is quite a bit smaller. 26.75 is really a better representation of the entire set of data than that previous number of, of 43.4. So that one outlier greatly affected the mean. So now we've got these four different uh, measures of center, we may be tempted to ask the question, which is best, quote unquote. Well, the mean, as we've seen, are ex is sensitive to extreme values, or also called outliers. And so for that reason, they can give an inaccurate impression of the data. We already mentioned that with the number of 110 in the, in the data set, 
um, we got a, a value that was quite a bit larger than, than all but one. So that would give an inaccurate impression of the actual salaries at Advantage 2000. Uh, the median is not near as sensitive to extreme values. Uh, when we remove that one outlier, it didn't change the median at all. So the median is a good choice if there are some extreme values. That's why the median is often used to report things like salaries or house values, because in those sets of data, we often have a lot of outliers. Uh, the mode is good for qualitative data. That's data that comes in the form of, of uh, words, uh, but it's typically not used for quantitative data. It can be used for quantitative data, uh, but not typically. Okay, so mean, medians, and modes are often you know, easy to calculate, but this next uh, example is going to illustrate that we can't always calculate the mean, the median, the mode for a set of data. So here's an example of a set of data uh, of phone complaints collected by an operator. So people would call into the operator with complaints, and the operator would, would uh, record what type of complaint they had. It was either of the types rates and services, or marketing, international calling. Uh, access charges, etc. So the data that the operator would collect is a list of words. It would be the word slamming or marketing or rates and services or access charges. It would not collect numbers. They would collect types of complaints which are the form of words. So what we have here is qualitative data. These are data in the form of words, not numbers. These numbers on the right hand side are not the data that they collected. These numbers simply summarize the data. The frequency of 4,473, for instance, means that of all the complaints, 4,473 of them were of the type rates and services. 1,007 of them were marketing, 766 were international calling, etc. So again, these numbers are not the data. These numbers summarize the data. So to calculate the mean, what we do is we add up all the values in our sample, divide by the number of values in the sample, that's how we get it. However, we can't add up the values in our sample because our values are not numbers, our values are words. You can't add words together, so the mean in this case is not defined. Now we could calculate the mean of these numbers in the right hand column, however that's not the mean of our sample of data. That would be the mean frequency, um, which may or may not be meaningful, but it's not the mean of our sample. So the mean is not defined. You can't add up a list of words and divide by the number of words. Now the median, well to calculate the median we line them up from smallest to largest, take the one right in the middle. But again our data are in the form of words. You can't line them up from the smallest to the largest, so the median is not defined either. However, the mode is defined. Remember the mode is the one that occurs most frequently. Uh, from our table here we see that slamming occurred 12,478 times, which is by far the most frequent type of complaint, so the mode is slamming. So again, just because you see numbers uh, in a table doesn't mean that you can calculate a mean or a median. The data itself may not be those numbers. Those numbers may simply summarize the data. We'll look at another s example that has two sets of data. Here we have five randomly selected daily high temperatures from Seward and five randomly selected uh, high temperatures from the island of Fiji. Now if we calculate the mean of each of those sets of data, uh, they come out to be 75. So the mean of the sample from Seward is 75, the mean of the sample from Fiji is 75. So based on that observation, someone might be tempted to claim that Seward and Fiji have the same weather. Well, that's obviously not the case. And we can tell that just by looking at the data. Look at that those temperatures from Seward, they range from about 60 up to 90, whereas the that's a fairly wide range of temperatures, whereas Fiji's range from 72 up to 78, which is not a very large range of temperatures. So to compare sets of data, we need to look at more than just the mean. Uh, we need to look at just how spread out, quote unquote, the, the data are. And so we're going to do that with what we call measures of variation. Uh, we're going to talk about three different measures of variation. One of them is fairly simple, the other two are much more complex. The first one is the range, which is one that we may be all familiar with. You take the maximum value and subtract the minimum value, that's all there is. 
So for example, for Seward the range is 90 minus 60 which is 30. For Fiji it's 78 minus 72 which is 6. So Seward's temperatures are much more spread out than, than Fiji. Our next measure of variation is much more complicated but it's going to be much more meaningful as well. It's called the standard deviation. Standard deviation is informally a measure of the average distance of the values from the mean. And the formula here is rather complicated. Uh, you see the sigma there which means sum. We take each x value in our data, subtract the mean, and then we square that, we add them up, we divide by n minus 1, and then we take the square root of that whole mess. So the formula here is much more complicated. However, this formula is built into our calculator, so we're mo mostly going to be using calculator to calculate standard deviations. Now one quick note about the units of the standard deviation. Uh, they are the same as the original data. So in this example, our original data, uh, the units were degrees Fahrenheit, so the standard deviation is also going to be degrees Fahrenheit. We'll also look at an example of how we could calculate standard deviation by hand if we wanted to. And it's helpful to organize things in a table like this. Uh, we put our, our data values on the left hand side and then uh, in the middle we're going to take each x value subtract the mean which is 75 and the right hand column we're going to square that difference. So that first row we take 60 minus 75 which is negative 15 next is 65 minus 75 which is negative 10 then 0, 10, and 15. Now some are negative, some are positive that's not at all a big deal because in the next step we're going to square each one of those differences. So negative 15 squared is positive 225, negative 10 squared is positive 100, etc. Now we add up all those numbers in the right hand side to get 650. Now 650 is that sum that appears in the numerator of our formula. So to finish it off we take 650 divided by 5 minus 1, 5 because we have 5 values in our uh, in our sample. Um, subtract 1 to get 4. So you get uh, 162.5. Then you take the square root of that to get 12.75. Now there in the right hand corner you see how we could enter that into our calculator to, to calculate the standard deviation. Yep. Now our, our third measure of variation is very similar to the standard deviation. Um, it's called the variance. Variance is denoted S squared and it is simply the square of the standard deviation. So once I find my variance, or excuse me, once I find the standard deviation, I square it to get my variance. So for Seward, uh, we square the 12.75 to get uh, 162.5. So that's our variance. Now the units on the variance are the original data squared, or the units of the original data squared. So the units of the variance here would be uh, degrees Fahrenheit squared, which sounds kind of funny, but that's just the way it works out. Okay. Now, calculating standard deviations by hand is rather cumbersome, and so we'll let the calculator do all the work. So let's, uh, let's let our calculator do the standard deviation for Fiji. So go back to your calculator and go to the, the stat edit, edit menu so that we can enter our data. Now we probably already have our data from uh, the previous example there in list L1, so we need to clear that data out before we start entering new data. So to clear list L1, uh, you scroll up till the L1 is highlighted, then you press clear, which is right below the arrow keys, and then press enter, and that'll clear out that entire list. It's a good idea to clear out a list of data before you start entering new numbers. Now once that's cleared out, you can enter the Fiji data in that list L1, you see the numbers there, 72, 4, 5, 6, and 8. Now, we're going to calculate one variable statistics for that set of data. So select stat calc option 1 for the one variable statistics. This is the exact same command that we did uh, with the Advantage 2000 data. Press enter twice, and here's the output you get. Uh, first there is x bar is 75, that's the mean, which is exactly what I claimed it to be. Now below that we have sx. That's our standard deviation, uh, which is 2.236. So there's our standard deviation. Uh, that's all there is to calculating the standard deviation on the calculator. Now, to get the variance, we simply need to square that standard deviation. So 2.236 squared comes out to be just about 5. Now, that is a command we'll have to enter manually, but luckily that's, that's fairly easy to do.
Now, when we calculate uh, means and standard deviations, we have two types, uh, sample means and population mean. A sample mean is denoted x bar and is calculated by adding up all the values in a sample and then divide by the number of values in the sample. That's what we just talked about a little bit ago. We also have what we call a population mean, which is denoted by the Greek letter mu. The formula is very similar, except that we add all values in the population and divide by the number of values in the population. Uh, now, a sample mean is a statistic because it's calculated based off information from a sample, whereas a population mean is a parameter because it's calculated based off information from the entire population. Again, these, these formulas are very similar. The main difference is uh, where you get the data from. If it comes from a sample, then you calculate a sample mean. If it comes from the entire population, then you calculate a population mean mu. All right, so we just talked about sample means versus population means. Well, we have the same thing uh, in, regarding standard deviations as well. A sample standard deviation is denoted by S, and we see the formula there. And we also have a population standard deviation denoted by the Greek letter symbol. We see the, uh, the, the formula there. The formulas are very similar, but the difference is where the data comes from. If the data comes from a sample, and we calculate a standard deviation, then it's a sample standard deviation, S. If the data comes from every single member of the population, then it's a uh, population standard deviation, sigma. And then likewise, we have sample variance versus population variance. Sample variance is S squared, the square of the sample standard deviation. And the population variance is sigma squared, the square of the population standard deviation. Now, a very important point to remember here, this is a point that we're going to be stressing later on in the semester, is that X bar, the sample mean, is an estimate of mu, the population mean. S, the sample standard deviation, is an estimate of sigma, the population standard deviation. Typically, we want to know something about the entire population, meaning that I want to know a population mean or a population standard deviation. But in order to calculate those values exactly, I would have to go out and interview every single member of the population and use that data to calculate the mean or standard deviation. That's dif very difficult, if not impossible, to do. So instead, we get data from a sample, and we calculate a sample mean or a sample standard deviation. Those numbers are estimates of mu and sigma. So to illustrate these, uh, these differences, let's look at a couple of examples. Uh, the registrar wants to know the mean GPA of all students at CUNE. He goes to Banner, gets the GPA of each student, and calculates a mean of 2.8. Is this mean x bar or mu, and why? Well, here our population is all students at CUNE. It says that right in the, right in the problem. So he, in this problem, he gets information from every single member of that population, calculates a mean. Well, that's mu. Mu, since it was calculated using data from every single member of the entire population. Another example, a statistics student wants to know the standard deviation of the GPA of all students at CUNE. He surveys the students in his stats class and calculates a standard deviation of 1.3. Is this standard deviation S or sigma, and why? Well, like in the previous problem, our population is all students at CUNE. Our data comes from only students in that stats class. That is a sample. So he calculated a sample standard deviation S because it was calculating using data from just a sample, not the entire population. Now, next we're going to talk about another application of the standard deviation. We mentioned standard deviations are, are difficult to calculate, but they're very meaningful. Uh, this is what, we're going to me uh, what we mean by that. So here's a histogram of those uh, body temperatures that we calculated back a couple of sections ago. And drawn on top of that is a bell curve. A couple of points we want to make here. First of all, notice in the upper right-hand corner of this, uh, of this graph, it gives the mean and standard deviation. And of the um, of the data, the mean is 98.2. If you look there on the graph, 98.2 occurs right at the high point of that bell curve. That's true for every set of data with a normal distribution. The mean is right at the high point of that bell curve. Other point we want to make is that where the 
where the the bell curve is taller that corresponds to more frequent temperatures so there in the middle around 98.2 uh, we have we've got tall bars meaning uh, large frequencies meaning more frequent temperatures we also have a tall bell curve where the where the bell curve is tall we have more frequent data values well we can use standard deviations to quantify just exactly what do we mean by more frequent temperatures so here we have a, a bell curve just a generic bell curve drawn notice we have x bar right in the middle because then the mean is right in the middle of the bell curve if we take that mean and then add the standard deviation s to it and then subtract the standard deviation s from it we get a range of, of data values we say that that data values that are within that range are within one standard deviation of the mean this so-called empirical rule says that about 68 percent of our data values in our sample are within that range or state another way 68 percent of our data values are within one standard deviation of the mean now likewise we can take the mean and add two times a standard deviation to it and then subtract two times a standard deviation from it and we get a wider range of values that range of values or values that are within that range we say are within two standard deviations of the mean our empirical rule says that about 95 percent of our data values are within two standard deviations of the mean and then lastly we can add three times a standard deviation to the mean and then subtract three standard deviations from the mean we get a very wide range of values values that are within that range we say are within three standard deviations of the mean this empirical rule says that about 99.7 percent of our data values are within that range so virtually all of our data values are within three standard deviations of the mean about 68 percent are within one standard deviation and about 95 percent are within two standard deviations now this empirical rule is true only for data with a normal distribution if our if our histogram doesn't have a bell curve shape then we cannot use this empirical rule and these um, and these percentages so let's do an example that illustrates this for our body temperature data that we looked at earlier uh, the mean x bar is 98.2 standard deviation is 0.62 our empirical rule says that 68 percent of our data values are within one standard deviation of the mean so we take the mean 98.2 subtract uh, the standard deviation of 0.62 and then we add 0.62 we get a range of values 97.58 up to 98.82 so 68 percent approximately of our data values are between those two numbers empirical rule also says that 95 percent are between two standard deviations of the mean so if we take 98.2 minus two times a standard deviation and then 98.2 plus two times a standard deviation we get a wider range of values 96.96 up to 99.44 so 95 percent of our data values are between those two numbers now we can use this um, this empirical rule to state a little more general version of it that we call the range rule of thumb which says that 95 percent or a quote unquote vast majority of all of our data values lie within two standard deviations of the mean and so based on this we can get what we call a usual minimum value which is the mean minus two times the standard deviation and a usual maximum value which is the mean plus two times the standard deviation any number that's between that that usual min and the usual max are what we consider to be usual anything outside of that range is what we consider unusual doesn't mean that something's wrong with it it's just unusual in that context now this range rule of thumb holds for data with any type of distribution it does not have to have a bell curve shape so let's do an example that illustrates the use of this uh, a sample of 40 women have upper leg lengths with a mean of 38.86 centimeters and a standard deviation of 3.78 use the range rule of thumb to identify the minimum and maximum usual upper leg lengths okay. well the calculations here are, are fairly simple the usual maximum is the mean plus two times the standard deviation which comes out to be 46.42 the usual minimum is 38.86 is, is the mean minus two times the standard deviation which comes out to be 
So any upper leg length between those two numbers would be considered usual. Anything outside of that range would be considered unusual. So here's the interpretation question. A supermodel has an upper leg length of 47 centimeters. Is this considered unusual in this context? Well, notice that 47 centimeters is larger than the usual maximum value. Um, so it would be considered unusual. The answer is yes. Now we have to add this qualifier in this context because if we had a different sample of women, we'd get a different mean and standard deviation, a different usual min and max, and it may not be considered unusual in that, in that context. Okay, our last example is going to deal with comparing two different sets of data. So a sample of height and weight data for 40 males has the following statistics. So we have took 40 males, and for each one we measured their height, and their weight. Then we calculated the mean and the standard deviation of the height data and then the mean and the standard deviation of the weight data. The height had a mean of 68.34 inches with a standard deviation of 3.02 inches. Uh, the weight data had a mean of 172.55 pounds and a standard deviation of 26.33 pounds. Here's the question we want to answer. Which set of data is more quote unquote spread out? The height or the weight? Well, we might be tempted to simply look at the standard deviation and note that the weight standard deviation is quite a bit larger than the height standard deviation. We say standard deviation is a measure of how spread out the data is. Therefore, the weight data is much more spread out. Uh, however, there are two problems with this type of analysis. Uh, first of all, the units on those standard deviations are not the same. For height, it's inches. For weight, it's pounds. You can't compare inches to pounds. The second problem is maybe bigger, that the standard deviations are not put into context. Um, what do we mean by context? Well, notice that the, the weights are in generally a lot larger than, than the heights. Weights have a mean of 172 pounds, whereas the heights are, are of 68 pounds. So we've got a large standard deviation for the weight. However, that's in the context of large numbers that may not be as significant as that small standard deviation for the height in the context of those smaller numbers. So let's give a couple of examples to illustrate what we mean by putting things into context. Here's a statement. It was a close basketball game. Concordia won by only four points. Most people would probably agree that that would be a close basketball game. Here's another statement. The soccer match was a blowout. Concordia won by four goals people would probably agree that that would be a blowout. Well, notice in both of these examples, the difference in scores was only four points. So why was the basketball game close, but the soccer match was a blowout? Well, it's because in a basketball game, you're talking about scoring 60, 70, 80, or, or more points, whereas in a soccer match, you may only score two or three or four or four goals. So that difference of four points in the context of a large numbers is not as significant as that difference of four goals in the context of small numbers. So we've got to put those differences into context. And this, that's how we're going to do this. We're going to calculate what we call a coefficient of variation. We're going to take the sample standard deviation, divide it by the sample mean. And that's going to help put those standard deviations into context. Uh, now, this formula is fairly easy to use. It's not built into our calculator, but luckily it's easy, easy to use. So the coefficient of variation is going to do two things for us. First of all, it's going to get rid of the, uh, the, the units. Take S and X. They both have the same units. You divide, the units go away. So there's no units. Second, it puts the standard deviations of context of the overall size of the, of the numbers. So to calculate the... the um, coefficient of variation for the height, you take the standard deviation of 3 divided by the mean of 68 times 100%, that just converts it over to a percentage, that comes out to be 4.42%. For the weight, you take the standard deviation of 26 divided by the mean of 172 times 100%, that comes out to be 15.26%. So now we can compare those coefficients of variation. The weight obviously has a much larger coefficient of variation and so we would conclude that weight is indeed more spread out. So this is the same conclusion that we came to
um, by just looking at the standard deviations, but this type of analysis is a little more valid. So that's all for this section. Uh, the homework is the section 3, 2 to 3, 3. And you can use your calculators to calculate means and standard deviations. Uh, don't try to calculate standard deviations by hand. It's too much work.